Good morning. This morning, we're going to be celebrating communion by focusing on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The passages that we will use as our primary reference point will be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Believing that Jesus rose from the dead is essential in our gospel message. Why is Jesus' resurrection so important to believers? Before we turn to the text this morning, please pray with me. Father, thank you for the gift of salvation. We are so grateful for the sacrifice that you made by sending your son to take on flesh and in perfect obedience suffer an excruciating death on a cross. His death is a perfect atonement for all sin, for those who believe in his death and resurrection and have accepted him as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. The bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most important event in the history of mankind. It provides irrefutable evidence that Jesus is who he said he was, the Son of God. So let's read together 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Paul uses the book of 1 Corinthians to establish and explain foundational doctrine for godly behavior. Chapter 15 describes the doctrine of resurrection. In this chapter, the Apostle Paul explains why it is crucial to understand and believe in Christ's resurrection. As noted in the verses we have just read and in verses 5 through 11, Paul is establishing evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is not only a validation of his deity, but also a validation of scripture, which indicates that he was raised on the third day. As we consider Jesus' death and resurrection, there are a few questions that may come to mind. Questions like, why is Jesus' resurrection so important? What proof do we have that the resurrection really happened? And what if there was no resurrection? Well, the resurrection is one of the foundational truths of our Christian faith. If we look back at verses 3 and 4 of what we just read, it says, For I delivered you, delivered to you of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus' resurrection is a foundational truth that validates our faith just as, we, just as we believe in the virgin birth, the deity of Christ, his atonement for sin, and his death on the cross. Also, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead is important because it fulfilled prophecy. His resurrection separates him from every other leader, religious leader, because no one else in history has ever prophesied of his death and resurrection and actually accomplished it. In Mark 8.31, Jesus prophesied that he would be raised from the dead. And also his resurrection is noted several times throughout the Old Testament. 
Jesus' death and resurrection are also a part of the gospel, as we noted in verses 1 and 2. Verse 1, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you firmly if you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. And Romans 4.25 says, he who, has delivered, he who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. A dead Savior cannot save. But we have a Savior who is alive and makes intercession for us. So how do we know that Jesus' resurrection is genuine? We know from God's word that it was prophesied in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and that all that prophecy came true. Luke 24 describes the empty tomb where Jesus was buried. The tomb was sealed and heavily guarded by Roman soldiers. On the first day of the week, several women from Galilee came to Jesus' tomb and found the stone rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Two angels were there in dazzling clothing and asked the women, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. The Bible records further proof that Jesus Wrote that Jesus rose from the dead in that over 500 people witnessed the resurrected Christ. And as believers, what proof do we have today that the gospel is true? It's a transformed heart. Many of you are set, who are sitting in this room have experienced a transformation from the old to the new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. What an awesome truth this is, that as followers of Christ, our lives are changed forever. We are new. We are being transformed into the image of Christ. Now, even though we solidly, uh, we are solidly grounded in the truth that Jesus was raised from the dead, Paul also describes for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 what it would be like if Christ was not resurrected. If you look at verse 14, it says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, your faith is also vain. Drop down to verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Verse 18. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. And then in verse 19. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all men most to be pitied. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, Neither will be believers be resurrected. Jesus' resurrection proved that his death is accepted by God as atonement for our sins. And if he had simply died and stayed in the grave, that would indicate his sacrifice was useless and useless in atoning for sin. As a result, believers would not be forgiven of their sins and heaven would not be our home. Finally, in 1 Corinthians 15, Scripture also is clear that all those who believe in Jesus Christ will be raised to eternal life just as he was. Christ's resurrection proves his victory over sin and death and provides us the power to live victoriously over sin. It guarantees believers a resurrected body and a place in heaven with our resurrected Savior. If you are here today and Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, we beg you to consider the truths in this message and to seek God's forgiveness for your sins. You have no way of knowing 
when you will take your last breath. And there are no second chances. Please listen. If you die today and Jesus is not your Lord, heaven will not be your eternal home. But instead, you, will, you may spend eternity regretting the fact that you passed up this opportunity to repent and to believe. We want you to know that we're glad you're here today. It is no coincidence God is, so, is so sovereign over your decision to come to Grace Bible Church this morning. And we also want you to know that any one of the elders are available after the service to talk to you about a relationship with Jesus. However, participation, is is in, participation in communion is for believers only. So when the men present the elements, please let them pass by. Believers, let's celebrate in the remembrance of our risen Lord. Meditate on his goodness and thank him for rescuing us from the domain of darkness. Men, please come and serve us. I will return in a few minutes.